Live from Brisbane, 7 News with Kendall Gilding. Good afternoon. Our top stories this Monday. The Ipswich Hospital COVID cluster grows as Canberra signs deals to manufacture vaccines in Australia. Queensland government debt tops $100 billion as Labor plans to splurge during the election. D-Day for thousands of homeowners who've had a holiday from mortgage payments during COVID. And Novak Djokovic kicked out of the US Open after accidentally smashing a ball into the throat of a lines person. Good afternoon. Ipswich Hospital's COVID-19 cluster is growing with two new coronavirus cases found in Queensland in the last 24 hours. Elective surgeries have been reduced at the hospital with staff moved to the emergency department. Isabel Mullen reports. Well, a woman in her 20s and a woman in her 30s are Queensland's latest COVID cases. One is a healthcare worker at Ipswich Hospital and the other is a household contact of a known case. There are now 25 active cases in Queensland. 6,062 tests have been conducted in the last 24 hours. 662 on Russell Island. A total of five staff have now tested positive from Ipswich Hospital. Arisen from working in that COVID area or from being a defined close contact uh, of uh, the nurses that were initially identified. 200 staff from the hospital are in quarantine. We've been waiting for about an hour and 20 minutes. Pretty busy. Yeah. The lineup, as you can see, the lineup starts there that for everybody that are getting tested. It's all a bit too close to home for me. Elective surgery as a consequence for the next few days has had to be reduced. Elective surgery staff have been shifted to support the emergency and admissions departments. The emergency department staff that had previously been under quarantine um, have all tested clear and they're back at work, which helped a lot. Quarantine for the crew who tried to sneak into Queensland on board the Lady Pamela ends tomorrow. I want to see them fined if that's appropriate. I want to see them charged if that's appropriate. Authorities haven't confirmed if the crew will be able to remain in Queensland once they've completed their isolation. The Prime Minister has warned severe economic impacts from Victoria's roadmap out of lockdown will ripple across the country. Scott Morrison has also suggested Victoria's virus testing and tracing is not up to standard. Tim Lester has more. In his comments today, the Prime Minister avoided directly criticising the Victorian Premier and yet as he discussed the Andrews plan out of lockdown, the PM was a picture of frustration. The plan that was outlined yesterday, I hope, is a worst-case scenario. From Dan Andrews warning his state must not run out of its pandemic lockdown... Crushing news. The Prime Minister all but accused Victoria of trying to crawl out. This plan has some very severe impacts. Enough, he says, for Treasury to rethink the country's economic projections four weeks from the federal budget. There will be ripple effects of this announcement yesterday that will impact other parts of the country. As well, the Prime Minister and his Health Department boss have taken Victoria to task over its capacity to quickly trace and isolate COVID-19 cases before they spread the virus. New South Wales is the gold standard. They argue Victoria has had to play catch-up on contact tracing. And I hope that they can feel confident with the strength of their position to take a somewhat less conservative approach to their restrictions. And the Morrison government has announced its first two agreements for COVID-19 vaccines. One involving Oxford University's potential vaccine, the other the possible vaccine from the University of Queensland. In all, $1.7 billion puts Australia in the global queue for 85 million vaccine doses if the two possibilities pass testing. A lot of vaccines are looking incredibly promising. Our vaccine is up there as one of the world leaders. We've already started to see some uh, data uh, feeding in that uh, assures us that the vaccine is safe. For now, the two vaccines look to be on track for use in the first half of next year. Queensland's debt burden has blown out by $18 billion in only nine months, with the government to use $3 billion of new borrowings to fund its election commitments. To Patrick Lyon, the Treasurer is saying the government has to step in to stimulate the economy. 
Yes, Kendall. Uh, Cameron Dick, he did have some sweeteners in there uh, for his pre-election uh, uh, budget update, even as he refused to rule out tax increases. Uh, Cameron Dick says he's going to borrow $1 billion for two new funds. Uh, that's $500 million for a renewable energy fund to buy projects and $500 million to invest in businesses needing capital. Uh, there's also $250 million to extend payroll tax relief in July and August. But overall, the economy looks pretty tough, with unemployment to hit 9% in December and stay at 8.5% this year. There was a modest surplus last December, but now it's an $8.1 billion deficit. Total debt will hit $101.7 billion this year. That's up $1.2 billion from six weeks ago and up $18 billion since last December. The Treasurer says now that that includes $3 billion of borrowings to fund our commitments to the election. What's doing what the Governor of the Reserve Bank and the Federal Government have asked us to do? An election slush fund on your taxpayers' credit card. When the private sector falls down, government must stand up. Now, this is what a real budget looks like. So instead of delivering a thousand page budget, Labor have delivered a 41 page glossy brochure. Now, Deb Frecklington in stunt mode, but the Treasurer insists uh, economic uncertainty meant he couldn't deliver a full budget. Uh, but uh, he is promising to do one if re elected in late November. Patrick Lyon, thank you. Britain's second biggest city remains on alert after a man went on a stabbing rampage, killing one person and injuring seven more. Police are still hunting the attacker who appears to have acted alone. Sarah Greenolch has more. Well, as coronavirus restrictions are eased, nightlife is slowly resuming here in the UK. So there were plenty of people around when this attack took place. It started at about 12.30 and continued for a two-hour period. Eight different victims attacked in four separate locations by one lone knifeman who police have now released CCTV pictures of. We spoke to a witness at the scene, a man who owns a Greek restaurant and bar. He was directly across the road and saw a young woman being stabbed in the neck by this knifeman, who he says was incredibly calm as he carried out this horrific act. I can see a blade. People said it was big knives. I've seen it with my eyes. It was a big blade like that big. And he was stabbing the girl in the cold, you know. So we started screaming. The girl was screaming more, obviously. At least five, six times I saw him going like that. Birmingham is Britain's second biggest city and residents were told by authorities today to be on high alert as police patrols were ramped up and the manhunt for this knifeman continued. Apart from those security pictures, little is known about him. Police are yet to reveal his name or his background. They also don't have a clear motive at this stage. They don't believe the stabbing is a terror attack or a hate crime, but rather a random attack that has left one man dead, two others critically injured and five other people hurt after a night out. The UK government has refused to rule out another lockdown after the country recorded the highest number of single-day infections since May. 3,000 cases were recorded, many of them among younger people. And it's so important that people don't allow this illness to infect their grandparents and to lead to the sort of problems that we saw earlier in the year. Residents in Bolton are being told not to mix with people from other households after a spike in cases there. He drew criticism for staging a tennis tournament in the middle of the pandemic. Now Novak Djokovic's 2020 has become much worse. The world number one has been kicked out of the US Open for hitting a ball that struck a lineswoman. Paul Kadak reports. Good afternoon. Novak Djokovic has gone from being the top seed and clear favourite to win the US Open men's singles to being kicked out of the tournament, officially defaulted after firing off a ball that hit a lines person after losing a game during a tough first set. And up. Uh, that's it. Oh no, he whacked a ball that might have hit a lines person back there. A shocking end to Novak Djokovic's US Open campaign. The world number one hits a ball towards the back fence, striking a lines person in the throat. Djokovic immediately apologises and does all he can to help as match officials are called onto the court. If you do this, if you're hitting a ball in any way in anger, as he obviously did, 
you're taking the chance of if you do hit someone, they're, you know, the, these are the rules. Under those rules, the umpires could not look at a replay. There was not a lot of force behind the shot and striking her was obviously unintentional. But it was not the first time he'd hit a ball in anger during the match. That, that was dangerous as well. The tournament's number one seed pleaded his case, but in the end, he was sent packing. It's tough for the tournament, tough for Novak, but I think the referee did the right thing. Djokovic apologising in a statement saying, this whole situation has left me really sad and empty. Thank God the lines person is feeling OK. I'm extremely sorry to have caused her such stress, so unintended, so wrong. I need to go back within and work on my disappointment and turn this all into a lesson for my growth and evolution as a player and human being. With Djokovic out, that now means for the first time since 2014, the winner of the US Open men's singles will be a first-time Grand Slam champion. Well, let's get a check of today's weather now. And Tony, what's the latest on these showers? Good afternoon, Kendall. We've seen some heavy rainfall in one or two spots, but overall it has been a drier day across the southeast than originally expected. Here are the recorded totals in the 24 hours up to 9am, and it was heaviest on the Sunshine Coast, a few spots recording over 50 millimetres there. The Bay Islands just behind, pushing over 25 millimetres. Then it was lighter further south, mostly less than 5 millimetres across much of Brisbane and dry inland. Today, more showers up towards the Sunshine Coast, but otherwise it has been cloudy and dry. A mild night, but tops very much dependent on where you were. 13 to a top of 26 degrees in Ipswich. Brisbane stayed up at 17 degrees overnight, then a top of 25 and a cooler 21 degrees on the Sunshine Coast. At the moment, combined dam levels at 60.5%. That's a drop of 0.4 of a percent in the past week. Kendall, I'll be back soon with tomorrow's forecast. Thanks, Tony. See you then. Well, should COVID tests be available at your local chemist? Why pharmacists are livid over the proposed trial here in Queensland. The day of reckoning is coming. What next if your home loan payments have been deferred due to COVID? And the sudden death of a veteran of the Queensland labour movement. On 7 News, a free transport plan to get workers back to the CBD. The Queensland University is set to make a massive vaccine announcement. Australia's experimental treatment that could stop Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And who owns Haku, the battle over a Gold Coast family's pet corgi. 7 News at 6. When no one is who they seem. I cannot accept what we did. Could you see through their lies? They're still stuck in the walls and you just don't see it. On the home of Great British Mysteries. <gasps> Foils War. Tonight on 7-2. Narrow the field with Ladbroke's Easy Form. Place a form-driven multi or single bet without having to study a guide. Available on all Australian and New Zealand thoroughbred greyhound and harness races. Ladbroke's. Back yourself. I love to start each morning with a little me time. And since building our deck and patio, I can enjoy the fresh air while I prepare for the day. Thanks to Apollo Patios, we've built a better lifestyle. Apollo Patios. Ready to make the switch? If you've got to download a new app today, go with the one that will stay the distance. The betting choice is easy. Ladbrokes, back yourself. Has your life been turned upside down by a road accident? Talk to Australia's number one law firm. Morris Blackburn Lawyers will maximise your claim so you can get on with your life again. Call us now. It costs nothing to know where you stand. There you go, guys. <laughs> Come on, mate. Yeah, righto. <laughs> Come on, Oz. <laughs> Oz Lotto, bringing the big Aussie fun every Tuesday. As Queenslanders, we know our weather can be unpredictable. With RACQ Home and Contents Insurance, know you're covered, whatever comes our way, from storms, floods, fire and hail. Buy online and save. Start your next chapter and discover life at Halcyon. Need space to move, learn or start something new? No worries. Want to connect, relax or explore all life has to offer? No worries. Halcyon is the freedom you need and the lifestyle you deserve. Discover No Worries Living by visiting a Halcyon lifestyle community today. Simply Google Life Begins at Halcyon.
I live and work here in Warwick. My job's great, every day's different. We generate a lot of energy for the local community and jobs too. We've proven we can, so let's do it. Authorised K O'Shaughnessy, Australian Conservation Foundation Incorporated, South Brisbane. Narrow the field with Ladbroke's Easy Form. Place a form driven multi or single bet without having to study a guide. Available on all Australian and New Zealand thoroughbred greyhound and harness races. Ladbroke's. Back yourself. Now is the time to get really motivated. These guys did it and they've never looked back. I'm really proud of what I look like. What I like most of is the convenience. It's everything that you need to create an amazing weight loss journey. Jenny Craig has definitely changed my life for the better. You get a personal consultant that tailors a program to suit you. And the food, it's great. Heaps of variety you simply heat and serve. Join today with our free six-week membership. Cost of food additional. So come on, Australia. Call now. Ready to make the switch? If you've got to download a new app today, go with the one that will stay the distance. The betting choice is easy. Ladbrokes. Back yourself. Child killer Rick Thorburn will recover to serve out his life prison term for murdering his foster daughter Tiali Palmer. He was found unconscious in his cell during morning rounds at Walston Correctional Centre. Thorburn was in a coma but has since improved and is now breathing on his own. The foster father murdered the 12-year-old who was in his care before dumping her body. He isn't eligible for parole until 2036. The union representing pharmacists is vowing to block a Queensland government plan to offer COVID testing in chemists. The health minister says the idea could help identify spreaders of the disease, but doctors say it's risky. Laura Dimmick has more. The state government announced their plan last month to put pharmacists on the front line in the fight against coronavirus. The idea is that customers in the chemist showing symptoms of the disease could be given a test right then and there, which could help limit the spread. But the Professional Pharmacists of Australia Queensland branch is alarmed by the proposal. You could have the situation where you've got somebody queuing up to get their script field, standing next to somebody who's going to get a COVID test. That is extremely worrying, extremely dangerous. The union, which represents several thousand pharmacists statewide, says their members are frightened and don't want to be part of the scheme. The Australian Medical Association has similar safety concerns. For God's sake, keep infected people away from retail. It is the silliest suggestion I have heard in the last six months. The Health Minister's office says the trial wouldn't be mandatory it would only involve a handful of pharmacies and is designed to pick up potential spreaders of the virus who wouldn't otherwise get tested. People are still going to pharmacies to get strepsils, to get cold and flu drugs, to get medications for the kinds of symptoms that, that we want to test for COVID-19. For now, anyone with COVID symptoms is being told the safest place to go is to a dedicated testing site. 30 kilograms of the drug ice has been found hidden in an unusual spot. Australian Border Force officers discovered the methamphetamine stashed inside an ice cream machine. The haul from Mexico was worth about $22 million and was concealed behind white foam insulation. It's the latest in a series of drug importations picked up at the Sydney checkpoint. The mortgage holiday scheme is ending. From today, banks are beginning to contact customers laying out their options. Home buyers will be forced to prove to their bank they still need help. Gemma Acton has more. Good afternoon. Banks have begun contacting customers who deferred their home, business and personal loans during the early days of the pandemic as the initial six-month deferral period draws to a close. Of the 900,000 loans originally deferred, customers have restarted repayments on nearly a fifth of them. In the coming weeks, banks will check in with 450,000 still deferred loan customers to plan next steps with borrowers. This is the largest ever uh, simultaneous customer reach out program in the history of the industry. If you can start repayments, you'll be required to. For those who can't, your bank may offer you a further four month deferral, that's until next January, or another temporary solution, such as switching to interest only or minimum repayments. Some lenders have already acknowledged they're not going to be able to help all struggling borrowers, and some forced sales will be inevitable. 
there's going to have to be uh, somewhere down the track uh, some pretty tough decisions about the best thing to do about their property. Government stimulus programs JobKeeper and JobSeeker are set to be cut back later this month and the jobless rate is forecast to rise before year end, creating yet more challenges for some borrowers. Customers due to resume loan repayments in the coming weeks are advised to shop around for a better deal, with hundreds of cuts to both fixed and variable home loan offers in recent months. Former Queensland Deputy Opposition Leader, BD Government Minister Tim Mulheron has died. He served as the member for Mackay for 20 years before retiring for health reasons. He passed away from cancer this morning, age 63, with the Premier saying Queensland lost a champion. Elections were to be held in Hong Kong today, but they were deferred by a year, sparking protests and hundreds of arrests on the street. A protester in Portland lucky to escape after his shoes caught fire during another night of action. And two familiar faces make their radio, radio debuts in Brisbane and on the Gold Coast. On 7 News, a free transport plan to get workers back to the CBD. The Queensland University is set to make a massive vaccine announcement. Australia's experimental treatment that could stop Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And who owns Haku, the battle over a Gold Coast family's pet corgi. 7 News at 6. Thank you so much for many Queenslanders. The cash cows bringing big smiles to Queensland. Only on... <laughs> The Ned's Punter's Toolbox makes punting easy this spring. Oh, 16-1! 16-1! Take it to the Ned's level. Yes, of course. Duty calls. I need your keys and your motorcycle. Where are we going, Mel? Home, James. Who is it, honey? Everybody! All the entertainment you love, all in one place. Yours. With HelloFresh meal kits, you get tried and tested recipes and fresh pre-portioned ingredients delivered to your door. Everything you need to cook delicious dinners. Order now at hellofresh.com.au. Inspiration delivered. At RACQ Bank, we put you before profits. That's why our Mortgage Saver Home Loan has a low variable rate of 2.77%. For an award-winning home lender that puts you first, choose RACQ Bank, where there's more for members. Watch Sky Racing live, anywhere, now available on Sportsbet. Help us deliver water to Australians in need. Buy any pack of Finnish Quantum Ultimate Pro exclusively from Coles and we'll donate 40 litres of water to farmers who need it most. With your help, we'll reach our goal of 10 million litres. Join the movement, Finnish. Why choose Boopa? Because you'll get six weeks free when you join on eligible products. Because who doesn't want to save a little more? Call 134 135 to find out more. T's and C's apply. Tough times don't excuse tougher times at home. Even in crisis, there's no place for abuse or domestic violence. If you or someone you know is affected, help is available online and by phone 24 7. For free confidential advice, support, and counselling for women and men, contact 1 800 RESPECT. There's no place for abuse or domestic violence. Help is here. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Ned's Same Race Multi. Now available on all three racing codes. Pump up your odds in any thoroughbred, greyhound or harness race by selecting two to four runners to finish anywhere inside the top four. Take it to the Ned's level. 
Every evening at six o'clock, we report to you. Asking the question. Contact tracing is now underway. But matter to you. Rolled out their COVID plan. Investigating the issues. Federal police raise concerns. Important to you. The South East prepares. It'll take decades to repay. It's the reason. Seven News can exclusively reveal. Nobody knows Brisbane like Seven News. Brisbane's most experienced team. A report by Queensland Health Officers found. Every evening at six o'clock. Our job is to report to you. For you. Every night. Nobody knows news like Seven Tensions have returned to the streets of Hong Kong with police firing pepper bullets as protesters threw bottles and other objects at them. 300 arrests were made. The group is angry that legislative elections due to be held today were postponed by a year. Leaders say it was because of coronavirus. Pro-democracy groups claim the pandemic is being used as a pretext to curtail their freedoms. A protester in Portland was lucky not to have been seriously injured when his shoes caught on fire during a demonstration. A petrol bomb thrown at police erupted in flames. The man caught in the crossfire with bystanders working furiously to extinguish the fire. The flames were eventually put out. Portland residents have been out on the streets for 101 days protesting after the police killing of George Floyd. And North Korea has released video it says shows leader Kim Jong-un inspecting damage from a recent typhoon. State TV gave no details about casualties or damage, but reported that the dictator was urging residents in Pyongyang to travel to impacted areas to help with recovery efforts. A second typhoon in a week is now lashing Japan and is expected to cause more issues in the Korean peninsula as well. Brisbane and the Gold Coast woke this morning to a new radio station. Rapidly growing SEN has hit the airwaves. The Breakfast Show is hosted by Seven's Pat Welsh and Test Cricket great Ian Healy. Steve Titmus checked out their debut. This is SEN's first foray into South East Queensland and it comes on the back of the broadcaster being massively successful in Victoria. First day, we're here. Hills, I've finally dragged you out of bed to do a breakfast show. It's been a while coming, that's for sure, Paddy. But good morning, everyone. Welcome to breakfast on SEN Track. They can be heard in Brisbane at 10.53 and on the Gold Coast at 16.20 on the dial. In television, we were always told... You know, let the pictures tell the story, silence is golden, people can see what's happening in front of them. Now I've just got to keep talking for two hours. This morning featured one of the biggest sports stories of the year, with Novak Djokovic booted out of the US Open after hitting a ball into the throat of a lines person. Officials in that case, they have no option. Out, default, yes. gone. It's the first time the two have had their own regular radio show. We complement each other quite well, I reckon. With tons of sporting knowledge, Healy, Test Cricket's team of the century keeper. Pat's sports coverage has seen him in a front row seat at the Olympics and his much-loved US Masters golf. I know we're called SEN Track, but really in that two hours, we're going to bombard you with all matters sports. The station has been on the rise since it entered the mainstream in Victoria a decade ago. Don't fret, Pat's still full-time with Channel 7. For SEN, they have plans for further expansion here in South East Queensland. Best of luck to the boys. Well, if you're on the Gold Coast, you're off to the chase, but Rod and Amanda will have your local news at 5.30. For the rest of Queensland, pressure mounts to speed up Victoria's exit from lockdown as the state records its lowest number of COVID-19 cases in months. The plan to get CBD businesses back on track as city workers work from home. And a bushfire emergency raging in the US, the moment a couple made a final dash to escape the fire front. Regenerating the brain. Australia's experimental treatment that could stop Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, stroke, brain damage. The holy grail. The Aussie trial the world is watching. The impact that it can have worldwide is just amazing. Why it offers new hope as we age. Only on 7 News, 6 o'clock. Two brothers, one girl. How about you move into our place? This is not going to end well. What are you, out of your mind? That's the place where Ari's brother lives. The one that you've got the hots for. Hey. 
sorry. I'm so oh, sorry. I didn't. My God. I... Tony, I just need you to be honest about how you feel. Home and away. This week at seven on seven. What are you waiting for? At Surf Life Saving Queensland, we believe behind every early start, every carpool pickup, every breakfast on the run, is a parent championing our next generation of lifesavers. <laughs> Family, fun, fitness, and friends. Sign up to Nippers now. What are you waiting for? We've been your Sunday drive. Your taxi. Thank you. Your home away from home. We've shared your journey. Now with Mazda Assured, the journey continues. With a guaranteed future value, you can enjoy a new Mazda more often. Search Mazda Assured today. No time for hay fever. Get back to life fast with Zyrtec. No hay fever tablet works faster. Look close. There's a sign to wear this you may have never noticed. Delicious chewy toffees and chocolate filled eclairs for the caramel lover in you. Discover where there's original caramels. Harvey Norman, your destination for outdoor living with our new season range on outdoor furniture and barbecues. The latest trends in timber, stone, aluminium and wicker, lounges or dining. Find the perfect solution to complete your alfresco area. A versatile collection for the ultimate in choice. Plus, we've got all your barbecue needs covered. Wood fire pizza ovens, smokers, charcoal and pellet grills, even outdoor kitchens you can design yourself. Plus, get 60 months interest free and receive a bonus gift card up to $500. Now at Harvey Norman. Live from Brisbane, 7 News with Kendall Gilding. Welcome back. Our top stories this Monday. A fifth healthcare worker at Ipswich Hospital has tested positive to COVID-19, one of the two new Queensland cases. The Premier has paid tribute to former Deputy Premier Tim Mulherrin. He passed away from cancer this morning, age 63. And world number one tennis champion Novak Djokovic has been kicked out of the US Open after unintentionally hitting a linesperson in the throat with a ball. After being left disappointed by yesterday's lockdown extension, Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews today offered some hope to long-suffering Victorians. As Melbournians began another week in lockdown, the Premier confirmed the slight possibility a significant drop in numbers could see restrictions ease faster. We'd always reserve the right if there was a step change, if these numbers fell more rapidly, and of course we had confidence that we had the most complete picture. Victoria recorded 41 new cases in the past 24 hours, the lowest daily figure in more than 10 weeks. There were nine deaths, eight of those in aged care. The state's pandemic death toll is now 675. While the Premier insists his gruelling roadmap out is supported by science, it doesn't have universal support. Deakin University epidemiologist Catherine Bennett believes stage three plus masks would have been enough. What I thought was bizarre was that we didn't really get to hear a lot about what sits behind these decisions. I'm not here today to have a debate with that um, that doctor so you can or choose which health data you you accept. Is that what you're saying? No, not at all. But there'll be many different views, many different views. But there is a concession, new bubbles allowing single people to have a single visitor from September 14 will be hard to enforce. There is some enforcement mechanism for some of those things, but a lot of it is based on the fact that we know people are motivated to do the right thing. There's no formal nomination, but this is for someone to bear in mind that uh, whoever they nominate is that person uh, until we move through to the next step. And we won't see localised lockdowns again. Unless you were going to say to postcodes, say a dozen postcodes in the north and the west, for instance, OK, literally no one can come in or out. That will not work. We just don't think that will, that will work. Meaning wherever you live across Melbourne, there is no escape. We are all going through a very difficult time at the moment, but there's a clear plan 
and I think there is an equally clear resolve across the Victorian community to defeat this second wave properly. Jacqueline Felgate, 7 News. A COVID Kickstarter has been floated to help Brisbane CBD businesses struggling with their worst trade in history. Georgie Chumley has more. The bold new plan would see free public transport and the money saved spent on CBD businesses. With as many as 60% closing or remaining closed since COVID restrictions began as city workers work from home. One of our busiest stores we ended up having to close on Queen Street because it's just been really quiet. Um, and then around the corner we've had another business that's shut down as well because there's just been no customers. Spending across almost all sectors has shrunk. Public transport use is down by almost 50%. The real risk is that people simply won't return to their lease. They'll close their stores and of course where you have closed stores and where the attraction of having multiple retailers um, come to those locations disappears. You know, it simply means that you, you're going to end up with a bit of a ghost town. There's definitely a CBD community. You know, people remember your coffee order uh, and you're with your colleagues and other people every day. And I think for a lot of people that have been working from home, we've kind of forgotten that. What else is being proposed to boost business? We'll have the full report tonight on 7 News at 6. There's been a major rescue operation in California to airlift out more than 200 people who became trapped as a huge bushfire closed in. The campers were stranded when the fast-moving inferno cut off the only road out of the area. This video taken by one of the last groups to make it out. 20 people had to be taken to hospital. Three major fires are burning in the state and heatwave conditions are predicted to continue tomorrow with temperatures reaching nearly 50 degrees in the state. Another massive protest in Belarus has called for the resignation of President Alexander Lukashenko. Tens of thousands of people marched to the outskirts of the presidential palace in the capital, Minsk. The protesters were met by a wall of police. A popular movement, movement is disputing the president's overwhelming win in recent elections. And climate activists have staged a protest high in the Swiss Alps, calling for action on CO2 emissions. The Triant Glacier has receded a kilometre in the past 30 years. Swiss Parliament will tomorrow begin debating laws to reduce emissions. Checking finance now with James Tao at Comsec. Good afternoon, James. There was a bit of everything on the local share market to start the week. Yeah, that's exactly right, Kendall. We had some gains, we had some losses, but at the end of the day, the ASX 200 up around 19 points or a third of 1%. Early on, we were looking like extending those uh, losses that we saw on Friday where the index fell about 3%. It was down about 1% in the first 15 minutes of trade, but we managed to quickly turn that around. There wasn't too much of a lead coming from Wall Street as well, looking ahead with a, a long weekend over in the United States. So that saw our market a little directionless uh, as well in the afternoon. We did have the big names, the, the likes of our big four banks, our major miners and also CSL all managing to, to lift and keep the market in positive territory, but also some losses coming through from the likes of our big retailers, both supermarkets and also the likes of Harvey Norman and also JB Hi-Fi, although online retailers had a much better day. Temple and Webster, which is an online furniture store, up around 6% today, and also Kogan.com lifting around 3.5%. The Aussie dollar uh, not taking too much of a lead uh, over from overseas markets. It's relatively steady, now buying around 72 percent Point seven US cents there, Kendall. James Tower, thanks so much. Shane Webke's here with a look at the day's sport next. Also, why police are now involved in the search for a missing pet. And how musicians moved these Queensland aged care residents to tears. Regenerating the brain. Australia's experimental treatment that could stop Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, stroke, brain damage. The holy grail. The Aussie trial the world is watching. The impact that it can have worldwide is just amazing. Why it offers new hope as we age. Only on 7 News, 6 o'clock. People who say that they can conquer fear are liars. You can't conquer fear, but what you can do is harness it. I spent 12 years in the military four years in the Special Forces. I've saved lives and I've taken lives. These Aussie celebrities are going to be leaving their privileged, selfish lives behind. This is not a game. This is SAS Australia.
Nature's Way has given us a strong foundation to live a healthy, active life. There's magnesium. Then there's Nature's Way magnesium. High strength and therapeutic. I love Nature's Way high strength magnesium. It supports energy levels. It relieves cramps and pains and supports muscle health to help keep us active. You can trust the tree with Nature's Way magnesium. My way. Experience the delicious intensity of Lint Excellence. The finest dark chocolate crafted to perfection by the Lint Master Chocolatier. Excellence from Lint. Your smash plant pot, our Gorilla Glue. For the toughest jobs on planet Earth, your broken chair leg, our Gorilla Wood Glue. For the toughest jobs on planet Earth. Sugar. Hey, RD Garage Doors are a member of the Titan Group, a trusted brand for quality and service. Our doors are made strong, come with the latest designs and colours, include tamper resistant locks, and can be automated. We'll come to you. Call 132169 or ARDDoors.com.au. Tonight on 7. A Gold Coast dog owner has made a tearful appeal for the return of her corgi she says was stolen by a man she trusted to mind her. She's even recruited a pet detective to try and bring the dog home. It's a desperate plea. If you see how could please help me. I don't know what to do. Labrador mother and pet owner Carmen Pam doesn't know where her dog is, but knows who does. He wouldn't get back to me, he wouldn't talk to me, he wouldn't return my call. This all started back in March. Carmen went overseas and trusted a friend named Ian to pet sit her dog Haku. I thought they would be taking good care of Haku. But Ian became so attached when Carmen returned and served 14 days isolation, he was reluctant to give the dog back. He said, I want to buy Haku, I want to keep Haku, right? You said no. You absolutely said no. And that is in writing. Kiralee Cullen is a pet detective helping Carmen. She's lost so much weight. She hasn't slept um, for months. Police are also investigating. The four-year-old purebred was last sighted with Ian at a home in Chevron Island a week ago. But when police arrived there... They didn't have the search warrant. Of course they can't search the place. Man up, hand the dog over to the police, a vet or the pound. The missing and stolen pet's Facebook page has shared this video to its thousands of followers. If you can do us a favour and share this. It's been shared hundreds of times with the hope people power can help this dog find its way home. I just want my dog back. On the Gold Coast, Amanda Abate, 7 News. Well, let's get a quick check of today's sport now with Webby. Thank you, Kendall. Hello, everyone. A Valentine Holmes field goal has earned the Cowboys their fourth win of the year, edging the Dragons in Golden Point to snap a nine-game losing streak that stretched back to June. Holmes' try helped the Cowboys erase a second-half deficit. The Million Dollar Men then nailed the match winner. And Broncos captain Alex Glenn is set to return from a knee injury in the M1 battle this weekend. 
Well, as you saw earlier, Novak Djokovic has been sensationally booted out of the US Open. The world number one hit a ball away in frustration that struck a line judge in the throat during his clash with Pablo Carina Busta. Experts say officials had no choice but to default the tournament favourite. Believe me when I tell you, I've done it a few times, you are very aware of if you hit somebody, you are done in a tennis tournament. Jordan Thompson lost to Borna Koric, leaving Alex Dimonor as the only Aussie still standing. Australia's four-month reign on top of the T20 World Rankings is in jeopardy after another poor batting display in Southampton. The Aussies were reduced to three for 30 in Game 2, going on to post a tail of 157. But it was nowhere near enough. England won by six wickets to clinch the series. Mitchell Stark admits the six-month COVID layoff has left the Aussies vulnerable. We were just that, that little bit off, which I think you get from, from obviously playing cricket. Um, you can't really simulate you know, international matches. Game three on Wednesday morning, our time. Kendall, plenty more at six. See you then. Thank you, Webby. They say music can transport you back in time. What you're about to see proves it's true. Residents from Queensland nursing homes are being surprised with songs from their past sung just for them by Australian artists. Doris Chandler's job during World War II was making army uniforms. She met a young soldier named Leslie. He was a country boy and I think he was a bit shy to, to ask anybody else. So he sort of stuck with me. They married after the war. He'd often serenade her. <laughs> He'd sing Danny Boy to me. A song not heard in years. And she's made a special video just for you. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Memories flooding back. Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy, I love you so. We had a good life together. We can't ask for much more than that, can we? Kate Miller Heidke's also been in on the surprise act. So has Katie Noonan playing for Paul Jensen, a former professional drummer. And after the day, the darkness will hide me. Oh, yeah. And maybe tomorrow. Peter and Barbara fell in love 70 years ago to the song As Time Goes By. It was our song. And when two lovers woo, they still say I love. The power of music. On that you can rely. Peter Doherty, Seven News. Such a heartwarming story and so beautifully told by Peter Doherty. Well, Tony's weather for all of Queensland is up next, then two popular southeast Queensland anthems, but not as we know it. And the three year old girl stealing the spotlight at the US Open. On 7 News, a free transport plan to get workers back to the CBD. The Queensland University is set to make a massive vaccine announcement. Australia's experimental treatment that could stop Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And who owns Haku, the battle over a Gold Coast family's pet corgi. 7 News at 6. Good afternoon, Dave Andrews in the Slater and Gordon traffic chopper. Well, we've got a police incident ongoing at the moment on the Mount Lindsay Highway through Druvale, keeping the traffic a little bit slow heading past there. A set of traffic lights out on Flash here. They're on Mackey Road and Main Street heading through Narangbar, just near the train station, and some busy going at the Petrie Roundabout. Injured at work or on the road? You could have a claim through your super insurance. Check for free online with Slater and Gordon's free claim check. Simply visit slatergordon.com.au to get started. Every so often, you have something that makes you go, wow, that is the very best. This is the night you'll want to taste everything you see. Wow. It's food that you love. She's the pasta master. This dish is a family recipe. Mamma mia! And new flavours. Flavour, flavour, flavour. That could become your new favourite. I've never had one of those. Perfection. Right. Whose food 
Would you choose? That is liquid gold. New plate of origin. Tonight, 7.30 on 7. As Queenslanders, we know our weather can be unpredictable. With RACQ Home and Contents Insurance, know you're covered, whatever comes our way, from storms, floods, fire and hail. Buy online and save. Red Rock Deli. Discover a world of deliciousness. And there is only one... I'm alive! <laughs> Just kidding. I'm dead inside, emotionally. But that's neither here nor there. There's still only one cure for hungry, thirsty, and that's oak. With its full strength and full taste, it's full on! Oh, oak. Kill hungry, thirsty, dead. possible when you control the road ahead. The BMW X3S Drive 20i from $199 per week at 4.99% per annum. Business customers only. Search BMW X3. There are many types of sleepers and a sheer endless selection of mattresses that always makes it hard to find the right one. But now there's Emma, awarded Australia's equal best mattress by choice. Not too soft, not too firm, just right for all kinds of sleepers. From only $499, try it out for 100 nights risk-free and money-back guarantee. Awarded Australia's equal best mattress by choice. Emma Mattress. Order online now. Feel the clarity of non-drowsy Claritine for fast, powerful 24-hour hay fever and allergy relief from sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes and skin. Because stuffed animals are clearly no substitute for real ones. Feel the clarity and live Claritine clear. It's the question that has Goliath working up a sweat. Popularised by Jane Fonda is the expression Feel the what? A. Steel. B. Crunch. C. Burn. Are you up to the challenge? A mind-bending new chase. Weekdays on 7. Good afternoon, you're watching 7 News. Checking the weather now and it's been a cool and cloudy day across the southeast. While shower activity has been lighter than expected, we have seen falls over 50 millimetres up towards the Sunshine Coast over the past day. At the moment, still a few showers pushing onto the Sunshine Coast, but dry for the remainder of the southeast. Onto the satellite, a high down in the Tasman Sea here is pushing trade winds along the Queensland coast. We've seen showers running from north of Cairns all the way down towards the southeast. Elsewhere, this strong cold front in the bight here is bringing strong winds and some heat to South Australia. Adelaide airport pushed over 30 degrees today. Into tomorrow that front will slip across southeastern states bringing a few showers there and in Queensland where well, we still have a firm ridge of high pressure along the east coast bringing more cloud and showers. Around the capitals Adelaide cools down a bit a top of just 19 degrees after as I mentioned they reached 30 today. A couple of showers around Melbourne and Hobart. Back to northern Queensland showers picking up a bit for the normal exposed spots that includes the north tropical coast and the central coast including Cairns and Mackay. Wind's getting pretty strong on the east coast as well. Now it's the same story in the south, breezy with showers most likely from Bundaberg down towards Gympie, tops of 24 or 25 degrees there, and hotter inland, Emerald pushing up to 30 degrees. Across the southeast, similar to today, showers most likely up towards the Sunshine Coast, though you couldn't rule out a breeze sprinkle further south. Another warm night, 18 up to 24 degrees in Brisbane, a partly cloudy but dry 26 in Ipswich. Now we are expecting another round of showers towards the end of the week. Kendall, all those details coming up at 6. Thanks, Tony. Catch up with you then. Well, taking a look at tonight's news, and Sharon, we've got exciting news on an experimental treatment the world is watching. Yes, Kendall, and it could stop Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and even stroke. In the news at six, why it's offering hope for all of us as we age. Also tonight, they've been compared to baby crocodiles and they're fascinating scientists. Yeah, and they can also fetch thousands of dollars, Kendall, on the black market. These skinks are critically endangered, but a Queensland first breeding program has already produced babies and new hope. That excludes 
exclusive story soon. And a heartless thief has robbed a little girl of her hard-earned savings. Yeah, and uh, she's a gorgeous little five-year-old and a business mogul in the making. Maddie Houston started her own strawberry business and was saving for a very fancy car when she was targeted. Wait till you see the very stern message she has for the thieves. I think she wants her money back, Kendall. It's priceless. So <laughs> all those stories coming up at six. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Sharon. The Queensland Symphony Orchestra has been enlisted to drum up support ahead of this weekend's Q clash between the Lions and the Gold Coast Suns. They've performed stunning renditions of the team's anthems. It's the first time QSO has performed an AFL anthem and it's hoped the music will boost the Lions and their once-in-a-lifetime shot of a home grand final. Let's see what's trending online. Hollywood heartthrob Zac Efron has been spotted getting off a Jetstar flight in Byron Bay. He's been living in Australia for most of the year and he's obviously lapping up our east coast, posting this snap on Instagram yesterday. While Serena Williams plays in the US Open, her daughter is stealing the show. Videos and photos of three-year-old Olympia are going viral online. Hit the court again tomorrow. And don't forget, if you want to see more, you can always find us online on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And that's all we have time for this Monday. Thanks for your company. Stay with us now for The Chase, then 7 News at 6. I'm Kendall Gilding. I'll see you tomorrow. What I'm about to do is simply bonkers. Terrifying. Brave. Exhilarating. Nuts. What I'm about to do